Good afternoon, dear brethren. Take two of this. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Today we are going to be addressing some of the stupidity of the Unitarian religion. Unitarian, or, or what is it, Universalists. Uh, some of the most stupidest devils out there. And they themselves aren't stupid, but I mean, the religion of universalism in and of itself is just totally contrary to scripture. And it bases itself off of the ignorance of scripture of the people. And that's how these guys are able to get away with nonsense that say, well, we are to love Satan and forgive Satan. Or that hell is not eternal or it doesn't exist. And everybody going to be saying, stupid, stupid. I have to warn you. Unfortunately, today, you dear saints, you are going to probably see mean, angry, hateful Brad because I have no respect for you universalists. None. You guys are a bunch of rank, vomitous, disgusting devils. Okay, and you're guiding people to hell. But we are going to be addressing uh, two of their favorite spots that they like to go to to try to say that everybody's going to be saved, right? So, so stupid. So stupid. We have done a video about this before. And it will be the very first, um, it will be the very first video in the description box. Everybody going to be saved. Uh, no. No. <laughs> everybody's going to be saved. But anyway. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me. Read along with me, okay? I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Okay? Okay, God forbid. All right? Read along with me because you need to see what's being read. You need to see it. You need to hear it. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. All right? Jude. Jude. We got a lot of scripture today that we're going to be going through. A lot. All right? That to the saint, this is milk. But see, to you Christians, um, this is going to be hard for you. So please get the perfect standard authorized version and read along with me. Okay? Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. What does that mean? Preserved in Jesus Christ. How are you preserved in Christ? Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? And called. The way of the call. The cross. None of this Calvinism stuff. Okay? Alright? Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. What does common salvation mean? It means that it's available to all. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Under the law, salvation is, uh, salvation is of the Jews. Okay? But under the law, before the death, burial, and resurrection, if a Gentile wanted to be right with God, they had to go through the Jew. Same principle today because Jesus Christ is a Hebraic Jew. But we don't go the way of the law because the law was fulfilled in the fact that the death, burial, and resurrection happened. Okay? The blood shed on the cross. Okay? Alright? He fulfilled the law in that respect. The perfect sacrifice for sins. Okay? Salvation today in this dispensation is available to everybody. But see, the problem is, for, for you people, is God has requirements. It's not just believe and receive. Okay, that's, that's heresy. That has been proven scripturally on an abundant measure. Okay? But you need to be broken of your self-righteousness. You need to have contrition. And the hell scared out of you. And see, a saint, someone who is saved, that happens in a, in a moment. It's not one, two, three, are you saved, brother? It happens like in a fell swoop. And when that happens, you can't wait the lesser to call on the greater, Lord, save me.
okay? So when it says common salvation, it means it's available to all. Watch out for these Pentecostals who pull this thing. Well, the gift of speaking in tongues, you know, in their tongues, blah, 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 okay, isn't for everybody. I, I've been given the uh, gift of dreams, and visions, and prophecy. Yeah, watch out for the Pentecostals, okay? They do that kind of stuff. So do some Catholics. So do some <laughs> Methodists, too, okay? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that's not Christianity. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this common condemnation. How are they ordained? It's none of this Calvinism stuff. Okay? None of that. Pharaoh, for example. A lot of people like to go to Pharaoh. It's like, God hardened his heart. Yes, he did. Why, though? Pharaoh already, before God even did anything to him, Pharaoh already in his heart had made his choice. The Pharaohs, and, and this is documented um, uh, elsewhere, that the Pharaohs themselves believed themselves to be gods. Big G, okay? They did. Pharaoh believed in his heart, like his father the devil, that he was a god. Okay? Talk about deceit. And when you have chosen in your heart that you are your own god, God will be, okay, you want to believe the lie? All right, take your hand and lead you along there. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? So, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ordained, they made their choice. All right? Ungodly men. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. What's the opposite of ungodly, okay? Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Perfect example, the free gracers. They turn God, that which their God's grace, which is not the God of Scripture, is a license to do whatever you want. Okay? And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not the stupid trinity. That's our, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Describing one God. One God. Who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Just like you and I are. Okay? I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this. How that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Afterward destroyed them that believe not. <laughs> and the angels which kept not their first estate. <laughs> right right there. Verse 6. Okay. Uh, we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be looking at some verses of scripture where these stupid universalists go to to say that everybody's going to be saved. And even the, 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 like the devils, the fallen angels, even they are going to be reconciled to God. Everybody's going to be saved. Like I said, we did a video before on that, which will be the very first one in the description box. We've already covered that, but unfortunately, you are only as um, relevant as your latest video, right? So, anyway, right here um, is a, <laughs> right away showing you that not everybody's going to be saved, and the angels that sinned, okay, are not going to be reconciled, okay? All right? And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, hath he reserved to in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, not their own, okay, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of Eternal fire. Eternal fire. Yeah. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. You know what, up here in verse uh, 7 where it says strange flesh? Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah. What was going on there? We get the term sodomy. Okay. The, peep, the guys of Sodom wanted to molest 
male angels. And by the way, there are no female angels in Scripture. There are none. Okay? Verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. There is not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. Like Paul, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? <laughs> All right? All right? But the Lord rebuke thee. That, that's very interesting because look at that verse. Michael the archangel. When, contend, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. Because Satan's the anointed cherub. The anointed cherub that covereth. Okay? Hmm. When you got these guys that go to the Greek, go to the Greek, go to the Greek. Hmm. Gay have God said? Let, you, let that roll around in your head for a little bit. Let's continue. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally, naturally, as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We want verses 11 on to verse four, uh, 14. Yes. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. They know here, but they not a relational knowing. Okay? But what they know naturally. That tells you right there what they know naturally. It's not a relational knowing. It's just a head knowledge. Okay? But what they know naturally as brute beasts. And those things they corrupt themselves. First Corinthians chapter two, verses eleven on to verse fourteen. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S Spirit of God. That's significant because capital S Spirit of God is showing you God who oh, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know when the Lord is that spirit, one God? Okay? Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, which is that spirit of Antichrist, okay? Because the world lieth in wickedness. More on that later. But the spirit which is of God, lowercase s, one that is imparted, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay? But the natural man. <coughs> Excuse me. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capitalist spirit of God. Again, God himself. The natural man. Unregenerate. Okay? God is not a God of coercion. Okay, you Calvinist pond scum. God is not a God of coercion. God does not force his salvation or damnation on anyone. Okay, he does not. Remember that. Please remember that. Okay? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, capital S, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. And also, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, one verse, verse 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, manner of men, beasts at Ephesus, natural brute beasts, unregenerate, not saved people, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Oh, and also go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 23 under 26. 2 Timothy 2, 23 under 26. But foolish, fool says in his heart there is no God. Being foolish is behaving, acting, 
asking questions as if you say in your heart there's no God. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Now, people, especially Christians, will take that. It's like, don't scare them. No, 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 no. The gentle is referring on to, because look at what it says. Apt to teach. Patient. The gentle is a reference on to not taking the entirety of Scripture and overloading, shoving the Scriptures down someone's throat to where you overload them and they get the deer in the headlight looks like, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Mark the Messenger. Okay? That's what the gentle is referring on to. Because guess what? We as saints, we are to be salt. Salt burns, but salt also preserves, okay? We're to be salty. We're to have a little fire. We're to have a little edge on us every once in a while, okay? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. See, you're stupid if you reject the reality of hell and the eternality of hell, or even worse, that you calling hell like a purgatory. Okay? You're stupid. You're stupid. I, I have no regret, remorse, or repentance of saying that to any of you who reject hell. Okay? But also, this thing about everyone's going to be saved, including Satan, that, that's stupid. That, that is stupid. And we've already read uh, in verse 6 in uh, Jude that that's not the case. Okay? But let's continue. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Professing yourselves to be wise, you've become fools. Well, the Greek says this. It could mean... Sh Shut up. Shut up. Okay? You know what you can do with your little Greek. Because, see, the Greek and the Hebrews, which one? Were stepping stones to arrive at the perfect standard. Okay? If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him by, at his own will. Now that's not making saying that they save themselves, but you know, getting out of what Satan has snared you in, say, oh, universalism. Okay? All right? There, there's a universalist church here in McHenry. Uh, down that way, uh, that doesn't help you at all. But they are notorious. Why? Because they openly promote and will officiate over same-sex marriage. And on their little marquee out there that they used to have, well, love is love. Hmm. Back to Jude. And it's interesting, too, that in Jude mentioned Sodom and Gomorrah, where we get the term sodomy. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 11, woe unto them. Uh, let's read 10 again. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Okay? Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Being carried about by every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men. Okay? Trees without... Trees... Whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, second death, plucked up by the roots. Hmm. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, they, they revel in it. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of 
darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these in the book of Enoch. Oh, my head doesn't say that, does it? Saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. That, that's us at second coming. Us that go up, you know, before the time of Jacob's trouble, when he says, come up hither. And those of us who are saved, uh, those of us who are asleep, you know, dead. Okay, we, we go up and we come back down at the second coming with him. The ten thousands of the saints, okay? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. God loves you. Oh, God, they, hell's not eternal. Don't worry. God loves everybody. Everybody's going to be saved. Just believe and receive. <laughs> uh, Second Peter, chapter 2, 17 under 22. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Hmm, the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Hmm. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, God loves you unconditionally. Everybody's going to be saved. Hell's not eternal. Hell is a purifying place. Some of those universalist guys actually preach that. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. And of course, what do you do, brother? When you come to that verse, what do you need to do right away? Romans 6, get in that habit. Verse 16, six, Romans 6, 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? Servant. Servant has a choice. Slave doesn't. Okay? You, you have to make the choice. God does not make the choice for you, Calvinists. Okay? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 20 in 2 Peter chapter 2. And what are we reading on to? Uh, verse 22. To the close of the chapter. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, only a head knowledge, like the free gracers, sleazy believers guys have, and some of these, some of these universalist idiots, okay? They are entangled, uh, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Why? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You, had, you didn't know what sin was until the Lord told you what sin was. You didn't know that uh, it was a sin to covet unless you had heard, thou shalt not covet. So these people who hear the truth and reject it, child of wrath, child of disobedience, you hear the gospel, the true gospel one time of the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and you reject that, you're a child of wrath. The end there is worse than your beginning. Okay? Because you've heard it, you have you know of it here, but you reject of it here. Okay? For it had been better for them to not, to not, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it 
to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is, is turned to his male, dog in that context is male, own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her, female obviously, wallowing in the mire. Back to Jude, verse 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 18 and 19. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These are they who separate themselves sensual, earthly sensual devilish, sensual left by their senses, having not the capital S spirit, not saved. Not saved. Second Peter chapter 2. Go back to that. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 10. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now this is a verse that you can point to about certain saints uh, turning away but for what purpose? Oh, there are some people out in the north, uh, out northeast, okay, who uh, justify yoking themselves up with Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they doing? And many shall, okay, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Yes, there are safe people in these last days who will get messed up. Yes, that's when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But you've got to remember, Mr. Fig Boy, that the falling away is not safe people who get messed up. The falling away are those who were never of us, but were made manifest that they were never of us. Okay? Save people fall. Just man fall seven times and rise up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Falling away is not the falling away that is talked about in uh, Second Thessalonians is not a reference on to saved brethren who get messed up. Okay? That's referred uh, hold your place. That is Second John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, who are these people? Okay, who, who are these people? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, led by the senses, having not the spirit. The falling away is not saved people who get messed up. Beware of people who tell you otherwise, okay? Go back to the second Peter. And through covetousness. Ah, there's the catch. People who are constantly barraging you to give to their ministry, like Ken Helvin. He, he's a Jesuit anyway, but he's an example, okay? I'm avoiding the obvious there because don't need to do that. But yeah, yeah. Covetousness. So it is possible for a brother or, you know, a brother, someone who is saved, to get messed up. Why? And through covetousness. Covetousness. Wanting to be popular, wanting views, wanting a big ministry, wanting your money. Okay? And through covetousness, Shall they with feign words make merchandise of you? Feign words. All things are lawful unto you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You saints can do anything that a lost person can do. Yes, you can. Does that mean it's right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And there are certain out there who, you know what I'm talking about, those of you who know, 
who will hide behind that, all things are lawful for me. Yeah. In order to justify sin. Why? Because of covetousness. Make merchandise of you. You know, it's, it's full of wonder. You see these so-called, you know, these Christians, okay, these channels who have their shops, you know, their merchandise. Buy a t-shirt, buy a coffee mug, buy a book bag. Merchandise. Making, make merchandise of you. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know why, you know, mo other people really get on them about that kind of stuff. It's like, dude, well, you know, you got to make a living, but dude, you're selling t-shirts and coffee cups. Christian, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything to get a dollar, huh? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Oh, there's that thing about damnation. Hmm. Hmm. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, here's another one for you universalists, okay? But cast them down to hell and reserve and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, the great white throne, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them a, an example, I love that word, unto those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just lot, Vexed it with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed it his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, self-government, they refuse to do judgment. Presumptuous are they, self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Back to June, picking up at verse 20. But, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. You know the Philippian jailer that the idiot uh, free grace was like to point to, you know, just believe and receive? He, he was going to kill himself. Okay? All right? Worldly sorrow leads to death. Okay? If the Philippian jailer, and because this is their argument, it's like, well, he had worldly sorrow. If the Philippian jailer had worldly sorrow, he would have succeeded. Okay? He would have succeeded. He had godly sorrow. Okay? And he was prevented from doing that, yes, because Paul and them was like, hey, dude, he was already broken. He was at that point, he was going to kill himself and commit Hare Krishna. Okay, yes he was. Okay, but see, he had godly sorrow that led on to repentance. He was already broken. That's why Paul didn't say anything to the Philippian jailer about repentance. Why? Because it was already there. He did not, that's the free grace argument. Well, he had worldly sorrow. No, he didn't, because if he had worldly sorrow, the Philippian jailer would have, ah! okay, easily debunked, okay? When you as a saint, brother, when you as a saint encounter someone who is at that moment, and the Lord orchestrates it, where you know that they're broken, that they are hopeless, that they see the water coming up on that submarine that they're sinking, and unless, they, unless the lesser cries out to the greater, save me! All hope is lost. 
Okay? And if some have compassion, making a difference. Okay? And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You know, the flesh that the devils worship. What does that mean? Say with fear. Unless you repent of your self-righteousness, and the Lord save you, you're going to go to hell. You're going to burn forever. It's not going to be uh, one of you know, it's not going to be one of these things where you burn up for a little bit and then your soul is annihilated. You're not going to go to hell so you burn and then repent and go to heaven. No, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. And yes, hell will be cast into the lake of fire. You're not going to get away from eternal fire. Verse 7, <laughs> the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay? All right. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Second Corinthians. Let's let's get to this. Let's get to this. You know, brother, there, you know, the, the past couple of days got a lot of stuff going on, by the way, brother. Brethren, please pray for <laughs> your servant, please. But um, there's a couple of directions that I thought it was this was going to go, but we're just gonna we are just going to focus. The Unitarian not unit uh, universalist, Unitarian Universalist. Universal Catholicos, <laughs> you know, that that's another one that, you know, I personally have not really focused too much on the Universalists. Why? It's, they're, they're, they're like, you know, if you got free gracers, I hate saying this, but if you got free gracers that could make mincemeat of the stupidity of universalists. It's like, okay, it's <laughs> it's like the, the devil free gracers. It's like, at least they got to look a little for what we lie to them about. You, you, you guys, you know, that's how it is. Okay, when you got free gracers that can pretty much decimate a universalist, it's like, but, but, we're in the last days for the redemption of the purchased possession. Men are lovers of their own selves. Boasters, proud, disobedient parents. They love their sin. A famine is in the land of hearing of the words of the Lord. Whoa, which one? You know, the Greek this, the Greek that. Okay? And the further we go, the soon, you know, the further we go on to the redemption of the purchased possession, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. Man's willful, ignorant stupidity of the Word of God because of the deception of Rome. Okay? Because, you know, it's like, how, how? And the answer is, because of that, because of the deception. But it's like, how, how can you people fall for this stupid stuff? Okay? Quite readily. Because, well, what's the Word of God? Yea, hath God said, the Greek this, the Greek that. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Now these are two verses that these, these lovely people like to go to to try to tell you that everybody won't be saved. Even saved. Listen. Okay? Some save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Listen. If you fall for that stupid lie that Satan is going to be redeemed and saved. Brother Satan. If you fall for that, you are a stupid idiot. And to be quite honest with you, I have no pity, compassion, or, or respect for you. I, I, I really don't. You have to be quite, I mean, a novice that's a different story. But, you know, you people who fall for that, 
you've somewhere heard the truth and you just don't like it. You don't want it. You want this sin, okay? And how self-righteous are you if you're doing something that God won't do? Okay? If you fall for that, you're stupid. You really are. You really are. You're, you're stupid. If you truly believe that Satan one day, by, by the doctrine of the universalist, if you believe that, you're stupid. You are. I, I've got no regret, remorse, or repentance of saying that to you. Somebody got to tell you that. Okay? But, let's read this. Verses 18 and 19. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us. Us. Who, who's the us? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Who's the us? Hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 1 and 2. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 and 2. Who, who's the us in this context? My brethren, when I came to you, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, or, uh, excuse me, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And of course, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Okay? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Uh, Galatians 6, 14 on 16. But God forbid that I should glory, save in, the, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Okay? Alright? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again. Okay, so what is that talking about? Thank you, pardon. I know this is What is that talking about? Those who are saved. Paul's talking about who are saved. People who are saved. Okay? Christ in you. Hope of glory. Okay? Crucified unto the world. Dead to yourself. Dead unto that. What are we supposed to be dead unto? So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18. Who is the us? Us. Is it all of mankind? Uh, look at verse 17. Therefore if. Little pen and circle if. If. Any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Okay? Old things are passed away. The old man, the old Adamic nature. Behold, all things are become new. You are a new creature when the Lord saves you. Because you have God the Father living in you. And because you are a new creature, that will bring about a changed life. See, you got to watch out for some of these Christians who are about to change life, change life. Okay. What necessitates the changed life, pal? Why don't you talk about that sometime, tough guy? Okay, alcoholics, reformed drug addicts, reformed prostitutes, whatever. They have a changed life. What brought that about? Something they did or being made a new creature. How are you a new creature? Christ in you. Okay. So, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, 
and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. First, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 unto 12. Now, again, this is not talking about Calvinism. Okay, the uh, video will be in the description box for you where we debunk the stupidity of Calvinism, okay? All right, so th this is not Calvinism. Verses 5 on verse 12. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated. God is a God who chooses. God, for example, chose the law under the law, he has chosen the way of the cross. So when you go the way of the cross, God elected the way of the cross, which is death to self beginning, okay? What is the cross but death? Paul, we already read, he gloried in what? The cross of Christ, which is what? Dead to ourselves, dead to the world, okay? Predestinated. You go the way of the cross, he seals you, he saves you. And seals you into the day of redemption. Guess what? You're going to heaven. Once saved, always saved. Okay? All right? That's what that means. This is not Calvinism. We go through this in depth in the one Calvinism video, which will be right under the one about, uh, what, what was that, everybody? Going to be safe, okay? Because, see, with this elect and predestination nonsense, according to the Calvinists, not according to Scripture, a lot of the people who are looking, because Calvinism... It's just your ear. Well, I'm elect. <laughs> I'm elect. I, I must be, there must be something good in me if he elected me without anything, you know. Got to watch out for these guys, especially some of these King James Bible-believing uh, Christians, okay, who, um, uh, you know, who look like the villain from Dudley Do right? You know, preaching veiled, uh, yeah, <laughs> veiled Calvinism. Okay, but predestinate. You go the elect way of the cross, okay? And you go in the elect way of the cross, and the Lord saves you, you are elect because you went the elect way of the cross. That's how that works. You're, you're going to heaven no matter what. Predestinated. You, you get that? Get that? That's very simple. To the praise of the glory of His grace, His grace, unmerited favor, Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. To the Jew first. Also to the Greek. Greek is Gentile. The beloved. What's that a reference unto? Israel. Okay? We're grafted into the tree of the Jew. Um, uh, beware of replacement theology. Okay? I'll be in the description box. Okay? To whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom, fear of the Lord, and prudence. See the tie in there, wisdom and prudence, wisdom and prudence. There are forms of prudence that come from a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. you got to watch out for that, okay? Having made uh, known unto us the mystery of his will. That, you know, when people say, well, what is the will of God? God would have all men to be saved. Yes, he would. God delighteth in mercy. God wants everyone to be saved. Yes, he does. But guess what? Guess what? God's, you know, not everybody's going to be saved. God is not, never has, never will force his salvation or your damnation upon you. You'd be a robot. God doesn't do that. Okay? Get that through your thick head. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, okay, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And we're going to address that uh, later at looking in Colossians, okay? you got to remember this. When it comes to something like that in heaven, you have to remember before the death, burial, and resurrection, Old Testament saints didn't go to heaven until the death, burial, and resurrection. You know, Jesus went and preached to the spirits that were in prison who were sometimes disobedient, meaning under the law, okay? Samuel, and that was Samuel, 
who came up. He didn't descend, okay? He came up when the witch uh, called him up, okay? For Saul, all right? They went to Abraham's bosom before the blood was shed on the cross. The perfect sacrifice was sent for sins was made, okay? Old Testament saints before, before, before the death, burial, and resurrection didn't go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom, which is in the earth. Okay? All right? So in heaven, where it says that, and we're going to see this, we're going to get into it uh, pretty good too, in this, where it says this, okay? Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay? By his death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, he paid the price for sin. His blood shed on that cross. Okay? The perfect sacrifice for sin. Hence, opening the way to heaven. He went down to the spirits that were in prison in Abraham's bosom. He was like, hey, let's go, guys. And then they went there in heaven. Okay? Before the death, burial, and resurrection, though, they went down to Abraham's bosom. Okay? And remember, paradise is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Somewhere on the video, on this channel, I'll try to find it. I can't promise you. Okay? But we did a, a, uh, a video about the word paradise. Paradise is linked with the Lord Jesus Christ, being with him. Okay? All right? So let's continue. In whom also we, obviously talking about saved people, have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Meaning predestinated. We're going to heaven. Okay? That we should be the be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Okay? Verses, now go to Ephesians 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Okay? But let's let's refresh ourselves again. Uh, verse 18 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. By Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Ephesians 2, verses 8 on verse 10. Ministry of reconciliation. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The not of yourselves, crazy guys like that, Dudley do right devil. Uh, it's like, see, it's Jesus' faith. If, do, listen to me. Okay. You never answered that scripturally anyway. You just went off the fact that I put a gun to my head, you idiot. If the faith you have wasn't yours, then you'd be a machine. You'd be a robot. Okay? And if it's Jesus' faith that you have and not yours, why are you still sinning? Okay? All right? Anyway, what is the not of yourselves? Verse 9. Not of works. What are those reference on to? The works of the law. Works of righteousness. Which, you know, the people uh, nowadays it's like, hey, I do this. I did that. You know? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? Uh, verse 8, and that not of yourselves, <laughs> yourselves, is not saying that the faith you have is the faith, actual, literal faith of Jesus. That is Calvinist. That is, I, I don't know why, well, yeah, I do know why. You King James Bible believing Christians can't see that. I do know why. I do know why. Because you love men more than you love God. And you love your little hero. <laughs> we need a hero. <laughs> you, 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 that stupid nickelback, don't ask. We all need a hero to save us? Yeah. You need a hero, huh? You might have, well, Jesus is my hero. I was like, okay. But most of the time, most of you people make a man your hero. You need a hero, huh? I pity you. I pity you. 
that we should be to the praise of his glory and first trusted in Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. But, okay, verse 10 now in second, uh, in second in Ephesians chapter 2. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Workmanship made into a new creature by him saving us. That seal, okay? Verse 17 in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Create, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. How did your life change? Because you're a new creature? Christ in you, the hope of glory? Or because you did something prescribed of men? See, you, you, you need to signify that. You really do. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in what? Walk in what? Good works according to the scriptures. Not to save ourselves, stay saved or be right. But to be in samples unto who? The lost people. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. Ministry of Reconciliation. Ephesians 4. 11 on to verse 16. Okay? We're all, every single one of us is in the ministry of reconciliation. Only men are supposed to do this. This does not mean that a sister cannot be used or witness onto uh, someone out, you know, someone out there. But see, here's, here's the thing. There are guys out there who will justify having a woman preach to them in a public setting like this. Okay, and this is another thing that that stupid idiot uh, uh, did, the Dudley Do-Right guy. He justified his, lovely help me, uh, preaching and said, well, it's for women. But you idiot, this is on a public platform. You're putting your, lovely help me, before all the world to teach. Okay, it's, yeah, okay, you say it's for women only, but men are also watching. See, you, you didn't get that because you lost. Okay, see. Men are the ones who are supposed to do that. But see, that does not mean that a sister out there, mano y mano, cannot be used to the Lord to guide someone on to him. That's not what that means. You put anybody, in a public thing like this, dude, you get a woman on there, she's teaching men as well. Okay? As I have been told a while ago, even Dave Murphy was getting on the female Christian preachers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Even he was. It's like, hey, what are you doing? You're not supposed to do... Okay, see, if an, if an atheist can figure that one out, well, see, you're not teaching men. You stupid idiot. You're on a public platform, moron. Okay? Uh, you're teaching men as well. Okay? All right? Lord rebuke you. Anyway, anyway, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Not everybody has the same office. Not everybody has been called to do what, the, what I'm doing here, what the Lord has me to do. You know, you sisters, you can plant tracks out there. We've run into it several times. You know, my wife will be in the wild world and something will happen. Then I come into the, you know, it's like I come in, it's like, hey, baby. It's like, what are you guys doing? It's like, oh, I was just, and then she's like, my husband's here. He'll, it's like, what's going on? And then, can you go from there? Okay. All right. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. We are all. Not everybody has been called to this. And men are the ones that are supposed to do the preaching and teaching. Okay? You got a problem with that? You got a problem with the Lord. You got a problem with the perfect standard, boy. No matter how colorfully and how smoothly you want to circumvent the truth. All right? Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Who is he all referencing to? Everybody know they're, they're come, Dude. <laughs> How stupid would you have to be to say when you come to this till we all, everybody, dude, what is this talking about? 
uh, uh, the body of Christ, edifying in the body of Christ, okay? <laughs> okay? Work in the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay? So, till we all come in the unity of the faith, everybody know this is a reference onto the church of God. Okay? It doesn't, all there doesn't mean the entire world. In context, this is talking about the body of Christ. See, see, you have to be really deluded to come to that all and say, well, that means everybody. And you universalists would do that. And the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man in heart, not sinlessly perfect, okay? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. God loves you. God's going to save everybody. Everybody's going to be saved because of the reconciliation. See, you're children of the devil. Carried about by every wind of doctrine. Okay? Saints can get messed up too, okay? But a just man falls seven times and rises up again. False converts, those who try to infiltrate, they fall away and get made manifest that they fake. Okay? But hey, you still want to watch them, knock yourself out. Fire it up and throw it at your head, okay? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, into all things which is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body, see, in verse 13, the all again. It's everybody? No, all, the body of Christ, okay? Dude, this is clearly, specifically talking about the body of Christ. You're a devil and stupid if you're going to make an argument that till we all, well, everybody, no, this is talking about the body of Christ. Okay. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? Right? Alright? Now go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read verse 18 again. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us, saved people, us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. Now here's where these idiots like to really go off the rails. To wit, God was in Christ. Amen. Amen. God was in Christ. First place we go to is... 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the capital S spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? <laughs> to wit, that God was in Christ. Colossians chapter 2. You're going to notice that there's a lot of going back and forth now between 2 Corinthians and Colossians. Don't miss that, what the devils do with this. Colossians 2, verses 8 and 9. <laughs> Beware! <laughs> lest any man spoil you through philosophy the love of man's wisdom and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the oil and not after Christ you also have to remember dear friends that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth okay we're still on the first earth don't fall for that stupid gap theory thing. That's ridiculous, okay? 
We're still on the first earth. There is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? All right? Let's continue. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Father, Spirit, and the Word made flesh. We're going to read the Johannian comma here in a little while, so don't worry about that. But in him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, so right there, what does that mean? You and I are made in the image of God. God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. A soul, God the Father. A body, the Word made flesh. See, the devils like to take that and make the flesh be made into the Word. Flesh made into God. Watch out for that. That's why so many people jumped on me a while, a couple years ago about the whole skin suit, uh, skin suit thing. Because they, they made flesh into God. <laughs> and ignored the scriptures. Okay. I, and then if you're going to bring that up, just going to put again, Judge Not video where we clearly go through that. Okay. That, all right. If you're going to bring that up, that's been debunked, answered so many times. Then again, you're only as relevant as your latest video. But judge not, and I'll put that in the quotation. If any of you like, oh, you know. All right. But for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, body. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. Okay? Very simple. All right. Verse 19 and 1 Corinthians 5 again. To wit, that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. 18 on to 21. Alright, now we're gonna we're gonna have a little uh, wabbit trail here, but uh, you'll see. Because here's another thing that people like to mess up. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Oh, you gotta stop sinning! Du, 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 shut up. Them wicked devil free gracers, even they can debunk sinless perfection today. Even they can. They 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 uh, they personify it with uh, their cursing and foul language that they use in their stupid live streams. Anyway, but I mean, even even they, even the free gracers can debunk the the sinless perfection thing. Okay, but we're gonna touch it. Just so you know. Do, if any of you encounter someone, and I wouldn't be surprised if that idiot, bald-headed idiot from England would eventually gravitate. Like one of his guys, he defended John Bossoff. If you don't know who he is, leave it that way. Um, it was like, you got to stop sinning. I didn't sin anymore. wouldn't be surprised to learn that eventually he goes into that uh, thing as well and trying to twist it through Scripture like John Bossoff did. If you don't know who that dude is, leave it that way. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. He that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. We're, we're going to explain that in a second. Hold on. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hmm. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, relational, understanding, departing from evil, not being like the world, okay? Which John in this epistle clearly addresses, okay? Uh, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Go to John, First John three, and here's something that these st stupid people who say well, you gotta stop sinning, they like to confuse this. Okay, now and looking in First uh, John five, okay, verse eighteen, we know that whosoever is born of God, born of God, okay, sinneth not. Born of God. 
We're to be born again. Okay? Being born again. All right? People will argue, well, Paul never said the word born again. You're right, he didn't. Who did? Jesus and Peter, right? So, and we're, there'll be a link for this in the description box for you. We go over it in depth. But there are those out there who say that being born again is just for the Jews. Uh, some of these free gracers, like the Richlingites, they kind of pushed on that a little while. They kind of slacked off on that a little bit. But they did. It's like, uh, being born again is for the Jews. And they, they bring up, well, Paul never said being born again. Um, you, you, you're right. Neither did the Lord say, I am God. Okay? He didn't say that. He said, I am. Okay? Neither did Jesus Christ say, I am the Messiah. You're right. He didn't say that. But he's like, he that speaketh unto you am he. Okay? He said, I am. Okay? And it, no, God never said, I hate Satan. But as we will see in Revelation chapter 20, uh, Satan is cast into the lake of fire to burn forever and ever with all those of you who love Satan. Okay? Uh, don't say that either. Okay? All right? Here's the thing. You're right. Paul did not, you won't find it in the Pauline epistles. Paul never said, born again. You're right. He defined it. Okay? Paul defined what it is to be born again, people. Okay? You're right. He didn't say the phrase, born again. He just, the Lord just happened to define what it means to be born again through Paul and the Pauline epistles, you genius. You idiot. Okay, you're right. You're right, though. You're right. You're right. You're right. Paul never said born again. You're right. He did. You are right. Okay? You're right. He just happened to be the one the Lord used to define what it means to be born again. Genius. Okay? Okay? The, the, the link for that will be in the description box. Again, uh, you twits don't want to see that. You don't want to consider it. Then you can go to hell and remember God loves you. Okay? All right? But 1 John chapter 3. Behold. Uh, on the verse 10. Behold. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew not him. Talking about, you know, understanding, departing from evil. Okay? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Okay? This usage of son of God differs from that in the book of Job, which was clearly angels. We are going to be likened unto the angels when we come back with him, we, you know, we get our new body. You know, when John went to go worship the one guy, the one dude, and he's like, see thou do us not. See thou do it that not. Don't do that. I am of your brethren, okay? Worship God, okay? That, John, when, you know, in the book of Revelation, the guy, the dude said, don't, 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 don't do that, dude. Don't, don't do that. That's one of us who go up and come back down with him, okay? That's one of us. So we will be likened unto angels, okay? Are we angels? <laughs> no, we're not, okay? So remember, there is a different usage according to context how Son of God is used. Please remember that, okay? So, beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. Again, more evidence of proof that when he comes back at his second coming, we who could come, you know, come up here, you know, we come back down with him. We're going to be like him, meaning likened unto the angels. Okay? And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Jesus Christ is our hope. Did I prove that to you? Absolutely. Okay. Just one real quick verse here. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Do we, do we need to go to, we should, should we? To Hebrews 11, verse 1. Okay. Now, faith is the substance of every, uh, 
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you come across one of these Pentecostal nitwit twits, say, I've seen Jesus. No, you haven't. Because if you've seen Jesus, you haven't. Okay? I don't care who you think you are, who you were, or whatever. You, anyone claiming to say, well, I've seen God. No, you haven't. You've seen something. I'm not denying that at all. But you saw an angel of light. Say, you've seen a devil. You have not seen God. Don't for one second, people, believe that these people who come around claiming they've seen God, that they've actually seen God. They've seen something. I'm not denying that. But have they seen God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ? No, they haven't. So, and every man that hath this hope in him, Jesus Christ is our hope. God in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jist Christ is our what one, one second I gotta find that. Sorry, I, we are going to read that, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you know, since we're talking about this, okay, first uh, first, Colossians chapter one, okay, Jesus Christ, who is our hope, you know, have this hope in them, okay? Um, Colossians 1 verse 27. To God, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the glory of this mystery among you Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Like I said, we're going to read that a, a little later, but I wanted to touch on it now. Okay? So when you read here in verse 3 in 1 John 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. What is sin? For sin is transgression of the law. But what about before the written law? But yet the law was written in man's hearts. You look at Abimelech, you know, when he took uh, Sarah. It's like, Lord, you're going to, you know, kill a righteous nation? Didn't I do this in the integrity of my heart? See, he knew instinctively that it wasn't right to take another man's wife. Okay? All right, let's continue. Whoso abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Now, you and I do not see the Lord with our physical eyes. But we can see his manifestation in us, how he, we, being new creatures, our lives change. And see his miraculous de dealings with us through brethren, through things in our life, okay? All right? All right. And ye know... Oh, wait. I skipped one. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Jesus Christ never sinned. People remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You read Romans chapter 8. Okay, he was in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay, we've, we've discussed this, we've debunked the, the devil's arguments about this. Okay, all right, Christ, God, never sinned, Jesus can't sin. Okay, so let's continue. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, in him is no sin. Who's to him? Let's keep reading. Whosoever sin, whosoever sinneth, hath not seen him neither known him. Know him. Relational. Seen. We don't physically see the Lord Jesus Christ. But, for example, chastening. You and I don't see the chastening in a brother or a sister. But the after effects of the chastening that yieldeth that peaceable fruit unto righteousness, that's what you and I see. We can see evidences of people who are born again. Okay? That's what that's talking about. All right? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested 
that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yea, hath God said. One brother brought that up too. It's like, amen, brother. Amen. The works of the devil. He shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Yea, hath God said. Now, verse 9 is the key to this. Because we see here thus far somebody being described with an anti. He that committeth a sin is of the devil. You know, before the Lord saves you, you know, before saints, we were dead in trespasses and sins. Our father was the devil. We were of that spirit of Antichrist, which is that spirit that worketh today in the world. Okay? All right? The spirit of God worketh in we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. The spirit that's in the world right now, presently, is that spirit of Antichrist. Look at all the Christian denominations. I rest my case. Okay? But, verse 9. This is where this is all tied up. Pay attention. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his, don't look at me, seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Look at verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. Who's that? The Lord Jesus Christ, right? Right? We can agree on that, yes. And in him is no sin. There was no sin in Jesus Christ. The flesh that the word was manifest in, that was sinful. We, I, I, you, you want to bring up that stupid argument? Judge not. Just watch it. If you don't want to watch it, shut up. And go to hell. Okay? But flesh is sinful. Okay? So, remembering this, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Hmm. Born of God doth not commit sin. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting, isn't that? Hmm. We're, don't worry, we're going we're gonna to address that here in a little, little bit in the second part of, you know, in Colossians, but Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Look across to 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. An unction from of the Holy... Ah, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Look at verse uh, 27 in 1 John chapter 2. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. Spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. Lord, is that spirit? Are you getting this? And is no lie. Uh, okay. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth. And is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So now looking at verse 9 again. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You are dead in your trespasses and sins until the Lord save you and seals you with himself, making you a new creature, making you born again, and being made a new creature with Christ in you, the hope of glory, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, dwelling within you. Okay? You're a new creature. You are born again, which Paul did not say born again. You're right, but he defined what it meant to be born again. Okay? All right? So, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Being born again. How are you born again? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? The Spirit, capital S, that dwells within the believer, doth not commit sin sin. That's what this is talking about. For his seed, that's the proof. The seed. The Lord. The Holy Ghost. 
you know, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? For his seed remaineth in him. That right there ties that up. His seed. The seal until the day of redemption. Okay? That is a reference. A reference unto the permanence of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit within the saved, born again believer. And he cannot sin. Who's the he? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed, God in you, will not sin. We sin all the time. But see, God the Father who dwells in you cannot, will not sin. Nor will he guide you into sin. He will guide you into all truth. Okay? That's what this is talking about. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. See, a saint who comes the way of the cross, the elect way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, the Lord saves him, he seals him with himself. He seals this believer with himself. I have the Father dwelling within me, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. So does every brother and sister in Christ has the Father within them. Okay? God is a lot bigger than a lot of you want to give him credit for. Does that mean we're a little Christ? God forbid. No. God could be in many places at the same time. Unlike Satan, who can't be in two places at the same time. Okay? God, see, you lost people don't get that. But see, verse 9 is talking about what spirit is indwelling. See, right here, where it talks about, uh, where was that? Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, verse 4, for sin is transgression of the law. See, that spirit of Antichrist is in the world. And if you are not saved, you are you have that spirit of Antichrist. God, your God is Satan. Okay? Your father is the devil. Okay? The Lord saves you, makes you a new creature, sealing you with himself. His seed remaineth in you, the seal unto the day of redemption. God can't sin. God and the saint will not guide a saint to sin, will not be okay with the saint sinning, and will guide him into all truth. See, the spirit that are in these universalists, the free gracers, the Catholics, some of the Baptists, and so many of the Methodists, and the Presbyterians, okay, it's that spirit of Antichrist. To be against and to replace. Okay? The Methodists are okay with sin. The free gracers, that's all they're all about. Justifying sin. The universalists telling you that Satan's going to be saved. Okay? And that everybody's going to, not everybody's going to be saved. Okay? So verse 9 is telling you what? The saved person has the Lord within them. And that is what, verse 9, this is what the context is talking about. Because guys like John Boshoff would come to this and say, see, you got to stop sinning. Uh, you can't stop sinning. The spirit that is within the saint can't sin because that's the Lord. The spirit that's in you Christians, most of you, is that spirit of Antichrist which justifies sin. See how that works? Okay? This is not talking about sinless perfection. This is talking about what spirit is in the person, spirit's own body. A saint, a saved person has God the Father within them. You Christians, you lost people, your father is the devil. Understand? In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth his brother. Okay? Alright? Now, I'll go to Colossians chapter 2. Again, Colossians chapter, chapter 2, verses 10 out of verse 15. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. God in you. That's why we can eat pork. That's why we can, you know, we don't have to worry about touching dead bodies. Because that circumcision, you have got the Father 
living within you, saints. Christians don't. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. And uh, the baptism is not required for salvation, okay? And I'll be in the description box for you again, okay? Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. See, all the trespasses and sins can be forgiven, but see, you've got to go the elect way of the cross. Okay? It's available to all, but see, there is a requirement to receiving that grace from the Lord. You've got to be broken of your self-righteousness. Uh, self you've got to be contrite. You've got to have the fear of the Lord. Okay? Those are required. All right? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, talking about the law, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, have made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And what are we reading to here? Um, to verse 15 right there, okay? Also now, Philippians chapter 3 Philippians 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs who go to their own vomit. Beware of evil workers, free gracers, Unitarians, Catholics. Okay? Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, lowercase s, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I just believe receive confidence in the flesh. That's why so many people got on me about the, you know, the skin suit video. Because they turned God into flesh. For conveniently um, skipping over that God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. See, the, the false, the devils turn flesh into God. God is manifest in the flesh. You got, you got to watch out for that one, brother, sister. Okay? You got, you got to watch out for that one. Okay? You really do. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verses 9 on to verse 11. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S Spirit. If so be that the Spirit, capital S of God, dwell in you, and the Lord is that Spirit. That's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Go look that up. Read the whole chapter for the context, okay? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, if! So be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the capital S Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the capital S Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit, capital S, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his capital S Spirit that dwelleth in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Again, showing you the, what John was talking about in verse 9 in 1 John chapter 3. Okay, that's a reference on to the Lord dwelling within the saved believer who does not sin. The spirit that's within us. I sin all the time. I sin every day. So does every other saved saint, except these Christians, you know, who are perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I sin every day. God and me does not sin. Okay? All right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. 
You were probably wondering, Brad, why didn't you read? But we're going to read it now. Okay? We're going to read it now. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? As I understand it, the universalists don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. How can they if you, you got to forgive in order to be forgiven? Doesn't make sense. Then again, nothing they do makes sense, obviously. Back to Romans chapter 8. Picking up at verse 19. Now you got to be careful. Now remember, Romans chapter 8 is talking about the body of Christ for people who are actually saved. And there are those, uh, every, all, all people are grown. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, that's uh, talking about, you know, the redemption of the pur purchased possession. When we, the body of Christ, get taken out of the way, y'all are going to know who is truly saved. Okay? Because you just believe and receive, guys. You Unitarian or Universalist pond scum, y'all are going to be left behind. Okay? So, the manifestation of the sons of God. Come up hither. When that happens, y'all are going to know who was and who isn't. Okay? For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subject the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Those who are saved. Okay? Not everybody's going to be saved. Okay? This is specifically talking about those who are saved. Okay? Let's keep reading. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Uh, in the description box, we have a video where we talk about that. We, saints, we wanted to get out of here an hour and a half ago. The fake, you know, the servants of the Vatican, they want us out of here too. They're groaning for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to come around. He who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. See, we're, we want to go home. Amen. They want us to go home so they could be, Satan can run about unhindered. Because let means to hinder. Okay? So it's a twofold thing. These devils, they want us gone. And hey, we want to be gone too. But see, God has a purpose for us still here. Okay? All right? Let's continue. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have, now comma, see, you got to watch it with these devils, which have the first fruits of the capital S spirit. The only ones who have the spirit, capital S, are saved people. Okay? That's it. The first, okay, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Come up hither. Okay. For we are saved by hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. You know the blessed hope? But hope that is seen. By grace through faith in the Garden of Eden and the Kingdom of Heaven. Oh. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? I, I've seen it. Seen what? I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. See, you got these guys who said that they've seen the Lord? That, that right there, too. There's another one for you. There's another one for you, you stupid Pentecostals. Okay? Yeah, you've seen the Lord? You haven't seen anything. You've seen the devil. I, I'm sorry. You have seen something. You haven't seen the Lord. You haven't seen the Lord. Okay, I lost uh, what I thought was a good friend of mine a couple of years ago because of this. Because of this. Okay? 
Guess you we always we knew all along, didn't we? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with ah, patience wait for it. Likewise, the capital S spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself, capital S, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. People, I've run into people, well, you know, the authorized version calls the Spirit an it. So what? See, and that is working off of the Trinitarian thing, that there's one God and three persons. The Trinity is heresy, a lie, satanic. Okay? So what? So what? Okay? Yeah, if God said, what does your Greek say, huh, you pond scum devil? But the capitalist spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts, okay, did I, did I, okay. Verse 20, yeah, here we go. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the capitalist spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 22 and 23. <laughs> you guys here. But I will... Okay, do you have red... Uh, this one doesn't have red words. It's Cambridge. Uh, you, you... God loves you guys. Jesus loves everybody unconditionally, even Christ rejecting sinners. Yeah, they're going to all be saved, right? Uh, check this out there, hot shot. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. Wages of sin is death. You got a you got a set of scriptures with the red words. Hmm. Wow, huh? It's like uh, also where he says, uh, uh, verse fifteen. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Hmm. Hate the sinner. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Uh, Jacob have I loved, but I hated Esau. Nice try. Nice try. Yeah, there's your lovely, dovey little Jesus. Yeah. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the hearts and searcheth the reins and hearts, and will give unto every one of you according to your works. Hmm. I found that very interesting. I found that very interesting. Go back to Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called, not Calvinism, called, the called, saved people according to his purpose. Saved people. Saved people. Saved people. Okay? Saved people. And you can continue to read on your own time, but we'll stop there. Because we'll now go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 19. Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, because... Before his death, burial, and resurrection, the world, the world lieth in wickedness. There was no hope, okay, except the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Reckons how did he reconcile the world unto himself? He made a way to heaven. He has. He is the way, the truth, and the life. His death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us. The word of reconciliation. So whose trespasses are not committed unto them? Or are not committed unto them? 
those who have gone the way of the cross to those who are the called the called according to his purpose okay all right all right now let's go to Colossians chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20 verses 19 and 20 For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. Now we already covered in him uh, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We already covered that. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and verse 8. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. We already covered this. And that, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water, natural birth, and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the capital S Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit, capital S, is truth. Here's the Johannian comma. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the capital W Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? It's not talking about no satanic trinity. Why do you think the Bible is like to remove it or put... A question about what the Johannian comma nonsense. Because hmm? it's not describing the Trinity. It's describing describing one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. And there are three that bear witness on earth. Capital S, spirit, and the water, natural birth, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go now to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verses 3 on verse 8. Jesus answered and said unto them, unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Referencing unto the spiritual. Kingdom of heaven is all works. Nicodemus, I like Nicodemus. I think he's up there. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, natural birth. This has nothing to do with water baptism. Uh, you know the phrase, their wa Her water broke, and then, plop, out you came. Okay? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the capitalist spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the capitalist spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, everybody, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capital S Spirit. Now see, right there it says born again. And then Peter it says born again. Be born again and not of corruptible seed. And again, these guys will well, Paul never brought it up. You're right, he never did. He defined it. Paul defined what it is to be born again. You're right, he never said it. He, he just happened to define it. Okay? Verse 20. Verse 20 in Colossians. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. 
By him, I say, whether they th be things in earth or things in heaven. Huh. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. 11 on verse 18. Wherefore, remember. Okay, things, what does that say? Things in earth. And see, these universalists say, come to this, and, or things in heaven, meaning Satan's going to be saved. With, there's already a video debunking that stupidity. But, where, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. This is referring unto the common salvation now. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, you know, being accepted in the beloved, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, reconciling all things unto himself. Those of us, Gentiles, who are without hope, or without God in the world, that's what that means, okay? The world lieth in wickedness. The world is contrary to God. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. What does it mean when he reconciles the world unto himself? Meaning that he has opened the way in common salvation for everyone to come to him. But not everybody's going to. Okay? But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometime, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Now what are we reading to? On to verse 18. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. We don't keep the law today to be saved. Okay? For to make in himself of twain one new man, so maketh peace. So making peace. There is no Jew, nor Gentile, barbarian, Scyth Scythian, or male or female, salvithically. Culturally, physically, yes, there is a male and a female, okay? But salvifically, we're all one in Christ Jesus, okay? All right? By him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth. Go back to Ephesians 2, continuing. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, um, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were far off, and them that were nigh. Nigh, the people who should have known, the Jews, are far off, us Gentiles, grafted into the tree of the Jew. For through him... We both have access by one spirit, and the Lord is that spirit, which he gives unto those who come to him the way of the cross, sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Okay? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And here is where these guys say, well see, even the, oh, dude, we've already, we've already covered verses that prove that's not going to happen. Okay, Satan is not going to be saved. You are a stupid idiot with no brains in your head if you're going to believe that nonsense. Blow up another one. Your God loves you, okay? Go away. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 7 on verse 12. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the error of errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying the, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while the first tabernacle was yet standing. See, before the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross, heaven was not available to the Old Testament saints. They went to Abraham's bosom. Okay? So, when you see that, 
in Colossians chapter 1, reckon, okay, verse 20, okay, whether they be things in earth, man, or things in heaven, meaning by his death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross, the way to heaven was now open. You know, he went down to the, preached to the spirits that were in prison, okay? Before that, they went to Abraham's bosom. That's what that means. That does not mean that the angels that are reserved for judgment, to, you know, and how Satan is going to be cast into the lake of fire, okay? That does not mean that these fallen angels, Satan is going to be saved. That's lunacy. Okay? Let's continue. Which, verse 9, in Hebrews 9, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Protestant Reformation. I've encountered people who have tried to take that verse and twist it into the Protestant Reformation. It's talking about the New Testament. Okay, not the wicked Protestant, Protestant uh, Reformation. Okay? But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. What are we reading to? On verse here. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once Catholic into the holy place, having a, obtained eternal redemption for us, safe people. And this is written on to the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, you gotta remember that. You gotta write and divide the word of truth. So, when you come to this, in verse 20, okay, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth, these are all things. Earth, man, little Poochie is not going to be in heaven with you. The spirit of the earth, uh, beast that goeth downward to the earth, okay? Man, by the death, burial, and resurrection, making of one, making uh, twain one, you know, Jew and Gentile, we all have access to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? By the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, or things in heaven. Death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross opened heaven. That's what that means. Okay? That's, that's what that means. Look at verse 21. And you, saved person, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. You hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Saved person, you were made alive, who were once dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We've already proven. You hear the gospel one time, you're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, natural, unregenerate, natural brute beast, by nature, children of wrath, even as others. God does not love you. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. You need to get that through your thick head. You've been lied to. Okay? These are clearly not showing. These, these don't prove that everybody's going to be saved. They're talking in context of those, number one, those who are saved. And as we see in Colossians, heaven and earth reconciled by the death, burial, and resurrection. Things in heaven, the way to heaven is open because of the death, burial, and resurrection. Because it wasn't, because the perfect sacrifice for sins had to be made yet. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Okay? Acts chapter 13. 
verses 44 and 52. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to gather together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming like a lot of our enemies do. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, Greek and Gentile. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of a everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. God is not a God of coercion. God does not force his salvation on you nor your damnation. You have to decide. You don't save yourself. We've already proved that. But God is not going to force you to be saved or force you to be lost. His salvation is there for everyone to have. But not everybody is going to go that way. There's, there's one verse. Oh, don't worry, we got more. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Common salvation for everybody. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. They made their choice. Wasn't Calvinistic predestination. We already dealt with this thing about ordained. How were they ordained? They made their choice. Okay? When the Gentile heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained, they made a choice. Hence, you're ordained. See? Not by force or coercion, which the Calvinists, like the Unitarian, likes you to believe. Okay? And the word of the Lord was published throughout all that region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. Don't miss that one. And the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. What do we do when that happens? People don't want to hear it. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into, onto Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, of course. 20 on to 25. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You're made in the image of God. You want proof of God's existence? Look at mankind, which did not evolve over millions and trillions of years from a sniveling piece of snot that came out of the water. Because that when they knew God, had knowledge, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, and the, the fool says in his heart there is no God. Foolish, behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You Unitarians that think you're so more righteous than God who has damned Satan to hell. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, you, you want to believe the lie? Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, your creature, who is blessed forever. Amen. Let's skip to verse uh, 28 on to the close. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You want to believe the lie? God will give you over to that. This does not mean that someone who has been given over to that cannot be saved. That's what uh, Stephen Anderson teaches, which is a Calvinistic elect and non-elect doctrine. Okay? It's not the fact. But you want to lie? You want to be your own God? You think you're better than God? More righteous, more noble than God? Uh, okay. 
being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, departing from evil, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, do not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 12 on to verse 15. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found even as we, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Reference on to that going to be at the great white throne. They're not saved. Not everybody's going to be saved, pal. Okay? Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Verses 20 on to 21. Time of Jacob's trouble. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works, not yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their theft, nor of their fornications, nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. So during the time of Jacob's trouble, and this is before the giving of the mark of the beast. During that hellacious time period, time period, body of Christ is not on the earth, but people are still not going to repent of their self-righteousness and whatnot and get saved. And ultimately, Revelation 20 again. Verses 10 on to verse 15. And the devil, here's the trinity, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Devil, beast, and false prophet. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You know, the matrix, the female reproductive thing that the Trinity symbol is based off of. And the devil uh, that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. If not everybody's going to be saved. Uh, uh, the devil and all his angels, okay? Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, okay? I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no, um, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever. And, of course, the eternality of hell, you know, uh, so hell's not eternal, that will be in the description box for you, of course. We've, we've uh, debunked that. It's so stupid. Stupid. Not everybody's going to be saved. And the verses of Scripture that these Unitarians go to try to prove it, it no. But what's going on? What's going on? Romans chapter 10. Oh, you, you free grace is going to love this one. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 on to verse 17. 
How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And see, the free gracers like to say about Romans 10, it's like, they never deal with that. that Elmer from New York did that a while ago. It's like, they never deal with verse 14. And these guys will focus on just believe when it says because it's believed there. But see, what is this talking about? Talking about those who are called to go preach the gospel. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, but this is specifically talking about someone who is a preacher. Okay? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And we don't take this upon ourselves. Okay? Except for the who the Lord sends. Okay? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hey, Christian, which of your Bibles is perfect? Oh, you got to go to the Greek. Which, which of them is perfect? Oh, the originals that don't exist, right? How are these guys able to get away with this stupidity, this nonsense? What are those who are preaching the gospel? Oh, they're arguing amongst themselves about petty things. Hmm? Amos, chapter 8. Yeah, arguing about petty things... Trying to justify Rome. Petty. Petty. Yeah. Trying to justify Roman Catholic things. Trying to justify sin. I follow this preacher. I follow that preacher. Yeah. Amos chapter 8. Verses 11 on to verse 12. The old the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They're not being taught the scriptures in this, these church buildings. What, there is no perfect standard except themselves. The Greek, they go to the Greek. What Bible is perfect? There is no, no, no perfect Bible. <laughs> Amen to that. Scriptures are perfect. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Now this will be fulfilled in its entirety during the time of Jacob's trouble. The word of God is going to be available during the time of Jacob's trouble. But they will not be able to find it because they're not hearing the words of the Lord. Why? Because they've taken the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. How this applies for us today, people aren't being taught the scriptures, the authorized version, and people are, the, you know, well, the Greek says, the Greek this, the Greek that, you know. They're not hearing the word of the Lord. They're not being taught the words of God. But they are their own standard. Hosea, chapter 4. Hosea, chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Capital G. Is that, this is instruction and, right, instruction and righteousness. By swearing and lying and swearing, those free graces on their live streams, and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn. Every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. The beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee, in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. You know, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, don't miss that tie in there, brother. 
My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And you, you read about knowledge in the book of Daniel. Knowledge will increase. Oh yeah, knowledge is increasing. But is it knowledge based off of a wisdom that is from above? No, it's knowledge based off of the earthly, sensual, devilish. I mean, you got these knowledge is increasing, but yet these people are so educated, they've become stupid. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. Christians are destroyed. What? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and Christians are not God's people. But just as the example, oh, they got all these books on the spiritual stuff. You can get this, you get that. You know that one Kennedy guy? Uh, he's he that book from Carl Jung. Okay, look at ChristianBook.com. I rest my case. Okay, because thou hast rejected knowledge, or oh, you're getting your knowledge from your father, the devil, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. But see, the true knowledge comes from the true wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. And departing from evil is understanding. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Verses 9 and verse 14. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and shew mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. These are works, but this is for our instruction in righteousness. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refuse to hearken. Hold away the shoulder. And stop their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. And the words of the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit. And the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations, talking about the scattering of Israel, whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, and no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Second Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Why are these people getting away with this? There are very few true preachers out there. People, I mean, you, you know, this is not about, this is not a job. This is a passion. Okay? There are those out there who have made it into a job. And you can technically say it is your J-O-B. You could, I guess, but... See, when you take that mentality and put it over it being a passion, then you run into trouble. There are very few true saved saints who are preaching. There are. Verses 3 and 4 in 2 Timothy chapter 4. For the time will come for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to spirits, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all the seemableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 
And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Ye shall be as gods. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. It is absurdity. It is absurdity. Not everybody is going to be saved. And for you to believe that everybody is going to be saved because something that you, you're being deceived. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. It's sad. It's sad that people are being led away with this kind of nonsense. But this is what they want. Roll up another one, buddy. Eat and drink for tomorrow you die. Your God. Your little G God. And your Jesus loves you. Thank you for watching this if you do.